Just let me know when I should start. Sure. I just counting right now. Okay, thanks. And it looks, yes. It looks like the members present will make a quorum. Okay. All right. Well, then okay. I'll go ahead and get started. Good afternoon, members of the MAG Active Transportation Committee. As a reminder, please turn your mics on and clearly state your name before speaking to ensure that members of the audience can hear you and please mute your mics when you're not speaking to eliminate any feedback noise. Because this is a virtual meeting, a roll call vote will be taken for each action item on the agenda. As a reminder, if you've phoned in, you'll need to press star six to unmute yourself. We will now begin the meeting with a roll call of all members. Thank you, Chair. I'll now begin roll call. Grant Anderson. Here. Thank you. Marielle Brown. Here. Thank you. Stephen Chang. Here. Thank you. Here. Jason Crampton. Uh, that's actually Sasha Petito um, as proxy for Jason Crampton. Stephen Esther. Teresa Graciano proxy for Allison Feliz. John Beltrain, proxy for Brandon Forey. Here. Thank you. Tiffany Halperin. Tara Harmon. And I think you're on mute, Tara. Present. Thank you. Jason Harris. Here. Thank you. Jim Johansson. Here. Thank you. Reed Kempton. Here. Thank you. Clem Lagaki. Here. Thank you. Daniel Loftus. Join the meeting. Jose Macias. Christine McMurdy. I'm here, Kim. Thank you. Mark Millstone. Here. Thank you. Patrick Sage. And you may be on mute, Patrick. Kelsey Shatnick. Ward Stanford. Here. Thank you. Garrett Topham. Here. Thank you. Justin Weldy. Present. Thank you. Nathan Williams. Can you, you uh, I can barely hear you, but I, I, I did hear you. Okay, I'll work thank on that. You. Okay, thank you. That's better. Thank you. And Chase Wallman, proxy for Robert Yavez. Here, thank you. Thank you. That concludes roll call, unless there's anyone present that I did not call or you were called and just joined. Excuse me, Kay. Yes. This is Daniel from the city of Litchfield Park. I, I believe I missed. Thank you. You're Great, thank you very much. Hi, Kay, this yeah, is hi, Sa Kay. Oh. Hi, Kay, this is Sasha from city of Chandler for Jason Crampton. Thank you. Hi, Kay. This is Stephen uh, with the town of Queen Creek. I missed it at the start. Okay. Thank you very much. And I think that's everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Item number two, call to the audience. 
An opportunity for public comment on the agenda was provided ahead of this meeting. MAG staff, have we received any public comments? Chair, we have not received any comments. Okay. We will move on to item number three, transportation staff report. Kay Bork, transportation planning project manager will provide a report to the active transportation committee. Thank you, chair, committee members. Uh, an update on the MAG bikeways maps. Uh, they will be printed within the next week and uh, we are ready to begin coordination for the distribution. And we're asking for your participation in either picking up the maps or if needed, we can deliver the maps to your agency. Uh, Kara Nasser uh, said she will be following up with more information uh, about the um, distribution in an email to the committee members. Uh, I'd like to um, announce that Margaret Herrera from MAG uh, will be giving us an update on the future of Safe Routes to School funding programming, and she will be giving that update under agenda item number nine. Uh, Valley Metro asks that I let the committee members know that they are starting to plan for the Valley Bike Month in April, and she would love to hear, this is from Susan Day, she would love to hear from anyone who's planning on their own bike events. Um, they're reprinting the Bicycle Commuting 101 booklets, and those will be available soon. And lastly, they do have a bike rack loan program for event organizers. And um, I will follow up with the committee members with her contact information and, uh, and this information. And that concludes my announcements. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, approval of consent agenda. We have two items on the consent agenda. Item 4A, approval of the August 16, 2022 meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve consent item 4A or any edits before we take a motion? Motion to approve. Anderson, second. Okay, thank you, Justin and Grant. Okay, we'll do a roll, excuse me, a roll call vote of all members participating. So please indicate how you vote. Thank you, Chair. Uh, roll call, uh, Grant Anderson. Aye. Mariel Brown. Yes. Thank you. Stephen yes. Chai. Aye. Thank you. Yes. Stasha Pachito. Yes. Thank you. Let's see. John Beltrain. Aye. Thank you. Tara Harmon. Aye. Thank you. Jason Harris. Aye. Jim Johansson. Aye. Thank you. Reed Kempton. Aye. Thank you. Daniel Loftus. Aye. Thank you. Christine McMurdy. Aye. Thank you. Mark Millstone. Aye. Thank you. Patrick Sage. I know Patrick's here, but I'm having difficulty hearing you, Patrick, if you are. I'll move on to Ward Stanford. Yay. Thank you. Garrett Topham. Aye. Justin Weldy. Aye. Thank you. Nathan Williams. Aye. Thank you. And Chase Wellman. Aye. Is there anyone that I did not call? Me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's <Chair> okay. <laughs> I just took that for That's granted. That's okay. Aye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And um, oh, go ahead. This is Clem Lagaki. I was also not called in, so I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, this is Ward Stanford with Avondale. I had said yay, and just to make sure we're clear, I did mean aye. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, appreciate that. Okay, can you hear me? This is Patrick Sage. 
Yeah, can, we can hear yeah. you. Okay. We can hear you now. I apologize. I, I seem to have equipment failure. So, um, I, I, how about that? That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. With a motion and a second, this motion passes. And then I, um, I had a mistake in my notes. There's there was just this one item on the consent agenda, so we don't have another item. Um, moving on to item number five, second project deferral request. Item number five will be presented by Kay Bork, MAG Transportation Planning Project Manager and the Town of Gila Bend. This item is on the agenda for action. Thank you, Chair and Committee members. Uh, this agenda item is the second project deferral request from the Town of Gila Bend. And this is for the Gila Bend Unified School District Walkable Bikeable Perimeter Project. And this, chair, uh, this item does require action from the committee. Uh, the MEG federal funding guide guidelines permits a sponsor agency to defer a project for one time without justification. However, if an agency wishes to defer a project for a second time, an appeal process is required, which includes a presentation and a request through the MEG committee process. Um, if approved, uh, this deferral will allow the federal funding to construct a project to be reprogrammed and aligned with the proposed project schedule. Uh, there are some risks with a project deferral since all FHWA funding allocated to the MAG region uh, must be obligated by the end of the fiscal year. However, if this is approved, the federal funding to design and construct the project will be deferred to fiscal year, fiscal year 2023 and fiscal year 2024, respectively. I'd like to introduce Kathy Valen Valenzuela. She's the city manager from the town of Gila Bend, and she will be presenting the second project deferral. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Good morning, committee. Thank you for your time. Um, so um, on our part, okay, can you move to the next slide? So um, this is for our Gila Bend Unified School District. So next slide, please. Um, for us, when the project was first conceived, um, a bond had been proposed and the bond failed for, new, for a new school. So um, in that time, a new bond was proposed and it actually passed. Well, what that did was uh, change the location of the school, therefore changing the complete orientation of any proposed design work. Um, we currently are in the midst of a safe routes to school study that is um, doing exactly that, looking at the new orientation of the school, um, looking at usage from student attendance, um, but another impact um, and delay for this project was not only the new orientation of the school with the passing of the bond, um, it was also, of course, happening during the pandemic and with students um, working or students attending school at home that also impacted um, any sort of um, ability to have a comprehensive plan to study what their um, routes might look like. So those two factors um, were significantly impacting this schedule, um, therefore, you know, causing us to need to ask for a second deferral based on those factors. Um, for just for context, um, this new school was a really great thing for a community of our size. Really great that the voters passed it. Really great for for students, um, but it just really changed the landscape of how things. Um, you know how things work and how students are using that that uh, location, and so as it exists now, um, although um, you know we're trying to make the best of our circumstances, um, I would say the number one priority in terms of the needs um, would be just you know uh, the sidewalks themselves. The bike lanes would be fantastic. The landscaping would be fantastic, um, but for our purposes. Uh, it's not so much about the aesthetics at this point, it's just about the safety of the students. Um, and so I just wanted to share that, um, what that looks like in our world. And so another factor that I mentioned in the slides is that, um, as you may or may not recall, we did have 
uh, quite a large flooding event in August of last year, August 2021, um, that caused a lot of damage to not only residents, but to our own town uh, infrastructure. So we've been, you know, dealing with that as well. Um, and so that's been that's been an impact for for our staff um, going forward. But I would say the two biggest items as it relates to this to this project is really um, the new orientation of the school and um, the pandemic altering student you know physical attendance. Um, and so we are requesting to defer design to 2024 and defer construction to 2025. Um, the other thing that we will have to consider is uh, making sure that our local fund match, if there's any way we can move that to, um, to the federal fund column to reduce our local match, that would be uh, a tremendous help to us, uh, given the fact that, you know, we are a small community, we do have a limited budget. And again, with the scope, including things such as landscaping and bike lanes and whatnot, if we do have to um, reduce the scope in in view of rising costs. That is something that we are uh, certainly uh, open to uh, to do. Um, if that is something, if we all consider this request and ultimately approve it, I uh, just want to share that the town is committed to making sure that students are safe. But again, we need to be mindful of um, the dollars that we're receiving and also our own uh, um, the own dollars that we're able to contribute. So thank you so much for your consideration of this request. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions before we entertain a motion? Yes, I have one or two. Okay, go ahead. Uh, were there more slides than what, she seemed to be talking from slides, but we only got the surrounding area on the slides. A uh, second question, she believes that this deferral request uh, took her to 2025, and that's not what we heard from the staff to begin with. That it was it was next year for the design and the following year for construction. So, uh, and then she talked about money. I'm not quite sure uh, how we handle all that in this deferral. Thank you. Um, Kay, can you check to see if there's additional slides? Because we're seeing the one that says brand new. Oh, yes, okay. there are additional slides. Okay. That's okay. Um, let's go through those again real quick then. And then, Kay, can you clarify? Because I wrote the same thing down. I wrote mm -hmm. defer 23 to 24. Were you saying the funding, the federal funding only allows for that, but they, but their request is, as she said, 24, 25? Right. The re, um, and Luckily, Patrick Stone is here, so he can correct me if I'm wrong, but the request was for 24 and 25, but we do need the deferral, the design for 2023 and construction in 2024. And how to handle and, the rest of the years that she would like it deferred to? Or is it just the obligation authority coming 24 and then you're effectively uh, done? And I would have to defer to Patrick if he can answer that question. Uh, yeah, thank you, Chair Conklu, Mr. Anderson. Uh, I, and I think there is some some disagreement here. I would, before I actually provide my answer, I'll defer back to to Ms. Valenzuela from the town. Uh, Kathy, do you have a a schedule that identifies when this project would be? Um, ready for design obligation, which I assume is predicated on completing the safe route study. Right. If I, I want to recall, I think it the study finishes in December. December, December of this year. Based on that, and, and that's partially, I think, why we have the request sitting as 23 and 24. If the study finishes in December of 2022, I can't see any reason why the town could not obligate for design in fiscal year 23 which means getting the authorization for design done sometime next spring, uh, no later than May of 2023. Okay. And then based on that, um, I'm not sure what the town had as far as a design schedule, uh, how long the design would take for this project. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if-, if um, I'll ask Mr. Wallace, our town engineer, for that detail. Yeah, so we would want to clarify that because okay. the way the item is presented to the committee, I think, mm -hmm. is the deferral is to 2023 for design, okay. 2024 for construction. Um, 
my recommendation would be to move with with what was in, attached in the agenda. If we need to make any sort of pivot, we can certainly pick that up prior to the TRC. Uh, and then uh, Grant, to your other question and, and kind of to what Kathy noted, as far as any sort of request for adjustment of federal funding and, and pro ratus, things of that nature, that's not what this committee is considering. All of they are considering is the deferral requests of the projects. <clears throat> as far as the programming, if, if there's a, a need from the town to adjust the funding, I just real quickly, um, once I heard that, I ran the numbers quickly. Currently, um, the review fee that ADOT assessed is to a project and the design of the project are at the max federal funding right now. So there's obviously no, no room to adjust. The only one that does look just a little bit under is the construction phase. It's not quite at the 94.3% federal funding. That being said, that's a conversation when we get to that year. So if this project, for example, defers to fiscal year 2024, once we get into 2024, if the town is looking to um, add federal funding, if you will, or to maximize the Fed percentage, that actually becomes part of the closeout process in 2024, and we'd have that conversation at that time. Thank you, Patrick. Um, Kay, Thank you, can, Patrick. You, can you go again through the slides um, from where we were on the map, just to double check? Yep, to see they'll, what they'll do we... that. Thank you. Right. Thank you. And I do have a question. Um, on how wide are the proposed sidewalks if it ends up just having sidewalks as opposed to bike lanes? The slides didn't, there we go, okay. Thank you. It seemed the presentation uh, went too far in terms of money for construction, and this grant request is only for uh, design assistance. And I appreciate Patrick clearing that up because it was a bit confusing. So this is not a construction funding request, uh, deferral request? This, so Madam, go, go ahead, ahead, Patrick. No, go ahead. I was, uh, Madam Chair, uh, members of the Active Transportation Committee, this request is a twofold request. So this is actually deferring both the design phase and the construction phase. Okay, but it's but is how is this project funded? So currently, uh, Madam Chair, the the project is funded. The design is currently funded in fiscal year twenty twenty two. The construction is funded in fiscal year twenty twenty three. Okay. So it'd be shifting both of those phases one year. Okay. But it this but the funding they have, the federal funding they have is for the for their construction. We also have federal funding for the design. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank is, you very much. That clarifies it. Are there other questions from the members? I do have another one. I cannot see in the original map where the new school was located, nor the route that hooks into from uh, the I-10 down to eight. Um, so, and then the, there are no more maps that tell me where the school is located. Okay. So there is one slide that shows the new school highlighted in blue. Yes, that shows the school only, and so I can't tell where it's located relative to the rest of the town. Oh, I see. Okay. Can you tell me? Sure. I'm looking at the other um, slide. So the town, so it's located um, off of Pima. Uh, so Pima is the main thoroughfare coming through town. Right. And so the school is located approximately uh, approximately maybe half a mile from Pima. Um, north or south? Uh, uh, north. 
can we look back at the previous slide and kind of gauge um, on there? I did not see Pima on this map, so I. Yeah, it's, it's a little difficult to get that contact, but that looks like that center, um, is that Logan Avenue? Yeah, Logan runs parallel to the new school orientation. Okay. So is some of it where that um, some grass, some, <laughs> some dirt field is there adjacent to a white building is that kind of the area now where the where the other slide shows the blue or kind of the center of this aerial okay looking back and forth i think that's right but i may be maybe the, reading the it the first wrong. map needs to show pima if it's close okay. to town or the, the, the major center area, but I don't know how far east or west. Uh, the map's not good there. That may there, be okay. Yay. Thank you. Now we got to find where it is. It's right where that blue um, label is, kind of, and it looks like there's some red in the background or brick colored looks like That's thank really, you yeah okay thank you now i have a good context yeah sorry about that so it's relatively close to the native uh area yes yes thank you do we have additional questions Looks like we do not have any additional. Is there a motion to approve this deferral request? I so move. Thank you, Grant. Is there a second? This is Christine from Goodyear, I second. Thank you. And we will have, so we have a motion from Grant Anderson and a second from Christine McMurdy. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote of all members. So please indicate how you vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I'll do roll call. Grant Anderson. Aye. Marielle Brown. Aye. Stephen Chang. Aye. Thank you. Sasha Pachito. Aye. Stephen Esther. Aye. Thank you. Teresa Graciano. Brandon Forey. I'm sorry, that's John Beltrain, proxy for Brandon Forey. We'll come back. Tara Harmon. Aye. Thank you. Jason Harris. Aye. Jim Johansson. Aye. Reed Kempton. Aye. Thank you. Daniel Loftus. Not sure Aye. Thank you. Christine McMurdy. Aye. Thank you. Mark Millstone. Aye. Thank you. Patrick Sage. Aye. Ward Stanford. Aye. Garrett Topham. Aye. Justin Weldy. Aye. Nathan Williams. Aye. Thank you. And Chase Wallman. Aye. And Chair Conklu. Aye. Thank you, everyone. And uh, the motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. We look forward to seeing the project. Thank you. Yeah, if, I'm assuming as it goes forward to the other committees and then if it takes shape. Sure. Um, moving on to item number six. This item will be presented by Patrick Stone, MAG Transportation Improvement Program Manager. This item is on the agenda for information. 
thank you, Chair Conklu, members of the Active Transportation Committee. Again, pleasure to be here this afternoon presenting this uh, this item. If I could get the next slide, please. So before I actually get into the presentation, I wanted to set a little bit of context. This is actually an update to a presentation that I gave earlier this year in April at Transportation Policy Committee. Um, this revised presentation was presented last week at Management Committee. You're hearing it today. And then it will go to TPC next week as well to be heard. Um, it's also been presented last month at Transportation Review Committee. It was on the consent agenda. And then again, it'll be on the consent agenda for regional council uh, this month. If I can get the next slide, please. So the pre presentation is actually broken down into three parts. The first is a brief high level conversation about the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act or IIJA. Second, I'm going to talk about federal transportation funding in the region. And then finally, a discussion about discretionary grant opportunities, both current and upcoming. If I can get the next slide, please. Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, it also is known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law or Bill. They are used synonymously and interchangeably. Uh, largest investment in transportation infrastructure in the nation's history signed into law last November by President Biden. Significant increase both in formula funding and then also in the focus of today's conversation, discretionary funding or grant funding. And one thing to note about the grant funding, it not only carried on grants a lot of agencies are familiar with, raised grant being top of mind, but also introduced a significant number of new grants that had not been seen previously. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so federal transportation funding in the region, it follows two paths. There's the transportation funding that's either, uh, the federal formula funding, either directly allocated to the MAG region or the pass-through dollars that come from ADOT. Second, there's also federal funding that comes through these discretionary grants. Uh, next slide, please. So before I get into discussing specific grant opportunities, I wanted to take the information from the previous slide and break it down a little further. So that th those funding opportunities, that federal funding, really there's two buckets, if you will, of the funding. The first being regional, oper regional projects. Mainly what we're talking about here are both the freeway and the transit lifecycle program, programs. Excuse me. These are the high dollar uh, capital projects, labor intensive, cost intensive type projects. And then second, you have the local projects also, as you note on the screen, sub-regional. Those are more associated with the calls for projects that we traditionally uh, have in the region. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned just previously, talking about first regional, uh, regional grants, regional funding, these are usually the larger capital intensive grants that have a benefit region-wide or even to a lesser extent statewide. Um, focus usually on the ones uh, previously infra and raised, and then this this last year with the new infrastructure bill, uh, they introduced a new uh, program called the Mega Grant, um, which kind of you know encapsulates a lot of other types of grants. One thing to note about these grants, they require a significant amount of non-federal funding, and they also take a high level of coordination between uh, both the agencies. Um, federal partners, uh, these, these are difficult <laughs> grants to write. They usually involve big applications. Um, but the one advantage of a regional grant is that it can have the effect of, of you know, a rising tide raises all boats. Um, the region is getting ready. It's, it's going through the committee process right now to potentially assist in pursuing a railroad crossing elimination grant. I'll talk about that in a couple of slides. Um, but that would be a grant to help you know, fund a, a major crossing elimination. But if the grant is successful, the funding that comes from the grant allows those regional dollars to be reprogrammed on other projects. So it has a great net effect to the region. Next slide, please. Then we move on to the local grants. These are uh, usually a lot smaller uh, grants. Uh, the ward size is smaller. The grant program itself is smaller. And what you really see in these types of grants is they are very focused. Most of these grants have a specific emphasis area. Um, just a, a, last week, there was a, a grant, the Safe Streets for All grant opportunity, the, the application process closed for that, but very specific to that item, Safe Streets. 
Um, we'll talk about it coming up, but there's uh, grants specific to electric vehicles. There were grants for, for bridge type projects. So these are very directed type grants. Next slide, please. So as part of the presentation I made earlier this year at TPC, we identified a regional approach to working with discretionary funding. Uh, the first uh, tenant of this is really awaiting the guidance from the USDOT. So as I noted earlier, quite a few grants that we are seeing have never been seen before. So we don't know what those grants will look like. Um, we have a, a resiliency grant that's coming up later this year called Protect. They've, they've issued guidance, but they have not yet, we've not seen a notice of funding opportunity. So we're not 100% certain what the emphasis will be in that grant. Um, there's gonna be the electric vehicle grants coming later this year, same type of thing. So what we do is we wait to see the notices of funding opportunities. And that kind of starts highlighting where USDOT is emphasizing, what are the things that they value that they're going to, <coughs> excuse me, score on. Uh, against that, we leverage our existing tools and analytical data that we have here at MAG. Um, one of these, and, and again, emphasizing back to the Railroad Crossing Grant, is looking at do we have projects that would compete well for that type of grant funding? Um, another example, I mentioned the mega grant program, ADOT, uh, and MAG is in support of ADOT, put in a grant for the widening of I-10. It, it, you, know, you look for those projects that make the most sense. You know, We have a good non-federal investment into the project. Uh, it meets all of the criteria of the grant, and those are the ones that we look at pursuing. Uh, but the hope is, is to take these tools that have been developed by our transportation performance group and start utilizing those to emphasize and highlight perhaps those smaller region or local grants that could also be pursued uh, effectively. And then finally, the last part is to refine the approach. So this is really a circular process. Um, you see what grants are coming out. We look at the NOFO, we identify projects, perhaps submit a project, or we look at what projects were submitted nationally, and then really look at the projects that were awarded. Where was the emphasis? The nice thing with this, these, these grants, most of them are contained in the infrastructure bill, and so they are five years of funding. So if we see the first year of funding and, and understand where the emphasis might be and what kind of projects seem to be doing better, it just helps the region identify where we might be more competitive. Next slide, please. So with that, I wanted to move in, <clears throat> apologies again, I wanted to move into some specific current grant opportunities. Um, as I mentioned before, the Railroad Crossing Elimination Program, uh, very exciting, almost a half a billion dollars available to fund either highway rail or pathway rail crossing elimination. Um, you can see applications are due October 4th. Um, and then we have an, another one. And this next grant, it's a very unusual grant. It, it, member agencies are eligible, hence why we, we show it, but it is an unusual grant and that is a singular grant for one amount. So nationally, they will be awarding one $6 million grant for a, a, a program that'll amp amplify public transportation with an emphasis on exploring interventions to address, and it's really to address transportation and security. So grant that grant application would be due October 11th. Next slide. Um, and one of those new, uh, if you will, targeted type grants, reconnecting communities, uh, a couple hundred million dollars available for projects. And what it is, it's really seeking to do exactly what it says. It's reconnecting communities by potentially removing, retrofitting, or mitigating transportation facilities that are creative barriers to communities. Um, some of these grants, and it's noted in this one, have a planning component. Um, most have a grant uh, they have a grant range. Either some have a minimum grant size or others have a maximum grant size. And then this particular grant application is due on October 13th. Um, and then a very specific grant in uh, Nationally Significant Federal Lands Tribal Projects Program. Um, so about $125 million. Uh, and, and what it really is, it's for reconstruction, rehabilitation, for the construction, reconstruction, rehabilitation of nationally significant projects and within adjacent to our accessing federal and tribal lands. Um, the region was successful last year. One of the member agencies did actually receive an NSF, NSF LTP grant last year. So it's kind of cool to see that the region is being successful in some of these types of grants. Application for that is due October 24th. 
Next slide, please. And then the final current grant opportunity, and this is actually a continuing grant opportunity. This grant has been out there previously, the Consolidated Rail Infrastructure Grant, or also known as CRISI, very large grant program, 1.4 billion for capital projects that improve railroad safety, efficiency, and reliability. Um, a long, uh, long grant application process on this one as the applications aren't due until next, uh, this coming December. And then finally, uh, an annual grant opportunity that is another one of those existing, and this is upcoming, will be the Tribal Transportation Program Safety Fund for fiscal year 2023. Uh, they expect the NOFO next month, hence why I've included it in the slide deck with applications, uh, hopefully due sometime early in calendar year 2023. I did want to note um, that's, the, that's the last of these slides showing what the grant opportunities are. We're still waiting here on other grant opportunities. There's quite a few we know will be coming, um, they're in law, so we know they have to come at some point. We just haven't yet seen the notices um, explaining when the grants will be out, what, what they look like. And as we get that information, we'll certainly pass it on to all the committees and agencies. And with that, Madam Chair, that concludes my presentation, and I'd be available to take any questions from yourself or the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have questions? Looks like there's a lot of upcoming and hopefully ongoing opportunities of different types. I know from our experience in Scottsdale, <clears throat> when we applied for the RAISE grant, um, Patrick Mag was very helpful in putting together the letter of support. And I know there was a certain amount of turnaround time for that kind of need, but it was helpful for the grant application. And then um, I don't know if any communities have had this experience, but we had, um, we were able to get some congressional level letters of support. Our, we were not successful for our funding request, but hopefully we'll get good feedback on our debrief and hopefully Phoenix, since they were successful, can maybe give in the future, give some insight to all of our members on um, some tips that may help if they apply for things in the future on any of these different funding opportunities. Yeah, Madam Chair, and, and thank you so much for, for actually mentioning those couple of points, because I think you bring up a couple items that are important to emphasize for, for everyone on the, the conversation today. Mm -hmm. uh, with some grants, the turnaround is very quickly. So um, oftentimes it helps if an agency is sort of looked ahead, uh, seeing what grants are on the horizon. If, if you've not utilized the federal website, it's very easy. It's grants.gov. Um, but they do have some good resources out there to identify grants, what's coming up, uh, what they're looking at. And so it allows an agency to get ahead of the game. So if they are looking for a letter of support or if they need assistance, it's out there. Um, and another good point that, that you mentioned, and I think it is helpful um, for agencies that do submit, oftentimes they do provide a debrief to kind of explain where perhaps an application didn't meet what they were looking for and allows agencies to hopefully come back and retool and, and submit a more competitive grant the next cycle. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you. Another thing to keep in mind if, for anyone who hasn't dealt with grants.gov, um, it is very simple, but you're, you may have to coordinate with accounting people at your agency because sometimes there's a designated person that has to do the actual submitting and setting up your workspace. And there's, there's some things to do ahead of time. So it's just helpful to know so that you don't have any last minute surprises <laughs> or frustrations. Oh, great to see all these opportunities. If does anyone have any questions before we move on? Yeah, Madam Chair, this is Jason, Town Paradise Valley. Um, there's no one, I believe, on this call for the Native American or the the lands. And I know Madam Chair with Scottsdale being so close, SRP, MIC, things of that nature. Who's going to reach out to those commu uh, communities in an effort for what we just saw? for potential exploration of any improvements we could do on the Loop 101. I would uh, have, a, oh, go ahead, Patrick. You, no, thank you, Chair Conklin, Mr. Harris. Yeah, so we have had, as I mentioned previously, this presentation has actually been presented at uh, quite a few other committees. Um, last week I presented at Management Committee and the representative from SRPMIC was on uh, at that meeting. So they did hear the same presentation. Um, obviously where we find those opportunities and, and hence why 
I also in the agenda packet for both this meeting and the others, you do see the listing of grants identified. Um, but yeah, so we do try and ensure that everyone knows what's going on out there. Thank you. Yeah, good to good to mention that um, since the their member isn't here today. Um, and it one thing I do remember from at least the the raise application process is it said that half of the money available would be prioritized for rural rural and tribal communities to make sure there's more equity. So that's something to keep in mind when you're telling others about these opportunities. I think Chair? Ms. Murdy oh. has her hand up. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I can't see raised hands. Thank you. Um, real, just real short, I just wanted to give a tip. Um, in Goodyear, we applied for a water grant from Bureau of Reclamation. Um, it was a it's a national grant opportunity, and the owner department um, was you know responsible for the subject matter information. But I was there for the administrative part. Um, we were turned down. Uh, about two times, so two years in a row, and both times we reached out um, to the Bureau to get feedback, notes, minutes, anything we could from the funding agency to improve the application. Third time around, we were the only agency in the state that got awarded. Okay. So I do recommend that you, if you do get turned down, um, that you reach out and get those notes, those minutes, any information, because they will consider you, and if anything, it it looks really good that you continue to try. Um, the only other thing I'll say is, is before you even attempt to apply, run it through your legal and through your accounting because there are often terms, uh, terms and conditions in the grant that you have to make sure that your agency is gonna be able to comply. I can tell you on the transit side, this was a painful learning experience. So um, I, I won't get into the details, but um, I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. So. Um, it behooves you to look at it early and have your subject matter experts in legal and finance take a look at it as well. But uh, I do recommend giving it a shot. It is an incredible career experience. Thank you. I'm glad you were able to be successful on the third one. Any others? Let me know if you see any hands raised. Otherwise, we will move on to item seven, request for future agenda items. Do we have any, does anyone have any? I have one, but I'll, I'll wait to see if anyone else has a request. Seeing none, this may be one that we mentioned in the past and I don't happen to have the list with me, but it would be really great to learn more about Idaho stop type um laws and data so if anyone knows anyone that could present that type of thing i would love to see that as a future item for our group and discussion do we have any others madam chair this is jason um something that came to mind with the deferral from Gila Bend, where the fiscal year 23 construction was moved to fiscal year 24, is the funds that were anticipated this fiscal year going to be part of the closeout process? I'm still trying to learn how that works and when the next call for project closeout will be. Okay, so are you wondering if, they, if staff can give a future item just kind of on that whole process and, and where we are now? Well, I, I know um, historically it's always been a call for closeout funds in the fall. I just don't know when that date is. Okay. So, Madam Chair, Mr. Harris, I, I can sort of, I think I'm going to address all of this in, in, in a, a fell swoop, if, I, if you will. Um, the intent had been to come to the Active Transportation Committee in October with an agenda item that will be our um, start on updating our federal fund programming guidelines included in the guidelines uh, our conversations about closeout funding how it occurs how we manage that process uh mr harris to your point while we could say they're included there we treat them as independent items so we what we do is we when i do close out i look at all of the projects programmed for the next fiscal year 
Um, I offset that against our projected revenues, and then we determine if we think we have sufficient funding to to do a closeout. So in a way, you know, we know this this deferral request is is a possibility. Of course, it's not approved yet. So we do plan for those items as we uh, determine what sort of closeout we might have in any given fiscal year. And also to your point, um, closeout, uh, if and when we do it, um, the memo is sent out to all the affected parties. It's usually mid to late October with requests due in mid-November. Thank you. Okay, do we have any other requests for future agenda items? And we will move on to item number eight, updates from member agencies. Are there any updates or announcements by committee members? And then um, this was also, I believe, when Margaret was going to speak to us. I'm happy to let- oh, Go other ahead, sorry. Go. No, I'm happy to let other members go first. So I was kind of waiting. Okay. <laughs> I'll jump in. This is Clem Lagaki. I put my hand up. Um, I just want to um, mention that ADOT has um, selected a new eight active transportation planner. Um, and so for the next meeting, you know, we will be coming to MAG to designate her as our new AT planner. And she is on this call. It's Elaine Mariel. And we welcome her. She's going to um, serve that function and other things for us. So um, hopefully we'll get with you and get a designation done. And in the future, expect Elaine to be participating in these meetings instead of me. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Elaine. We look forward to seeing you in future meetings. Thank you. All right, I don't see any other hands, but let me know if I'm missing now that I've <laughs> figured out how to view them. Um, let me know if you, if Mag staff, if you see any, otherwise, Margaret, you could go ahead. All right, thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Active Transportation Committee. Uh, we will be having a an agenda item for discussion at this month's um, Transportation Safety Committee regarding Safe Routes to School programming, um, as well as resources uh, for administration of Safe Routes to School activities. Uh, in looking at our past submittals for Safe Routes to School non-infrastructure projects, so this would be Safe Routes to School studies and Safe Routes to School support activities, we wanna do some outreach to all of you um, and get some feedback on you know how it's been going or if you um I, I know several of you do work with your schools um and have administered some of these safe routes to school studies and uh support activity type projects kind of wanted to get some feedback from you on challenges barriers things like that another thing that mag is working on in partnership with asu as well as some resources that we have been um, awarded through um, FHWA's Focused Approach to Safety, uh, we are looking at really trying to promote safe routes to school. And so um, I wanted to reach out to all of you. If you can uh, contact me offline at mherrera at azmag.gov, if you wanna forward me some, some input that you have on safe routes to school. We also wanna discuss things like, um, you know, timing of, of programming. You know, if and when at the time we do have another call for projects, you know, they're, they're typically included in with the uh, tip call for projects that comes out in August from Patrick. Um, and we all, those of you who know, um, who have worked with schools before, you know that that first two weeks in August um, is nearly impossible um, to coordinate with um, schools and districts on developing applications. So um, this is gonna be, as I mentioned, an agenda item for safety committee this month. And uh, if we are lucky to have the opportunity, I would like to also um, come to talk to uh, you all about it uh, with a, a more uh, robust uh, agenda item in a future meeting. That's it, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Do we have any other updates 
from anyone? All right, I, I'm gonna guess you're saving them all for next time. Um, we'll move on to next item, a reminder to committee members that our next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, October 18th, 2022 at one o'clock PM through teleconference. And with no further business, this meeting of the MAG Active Transportation Committee is adjourned at 1.55 p.m. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.